So today, I want us to look at a text in the book of Duke, uh, which is very common. Let's go to Luke 19. Luke 19, verses 11. Luke 19, verses 11 to 19. The parable of the ten miners. Let me read. When they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he caught ten of his servants and gave them ten miners. But this money to uh, put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. Verses 15, he was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your miner has earned ten more. 17, well done, my good servant. His master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and said, Sir, your miner has earned five more. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. Shall we pray again? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we will never tire from calling upon you because you are good to us. You have been so faithful to us. And as you gather us here, dear God in heaven, I pray for these dear ones that almighty and everlasting God, they have an encounter with you today. They will be different from the way they came in the morning. May you reign supreme in this place so that dear God in heaven, you open up our inner understanding to be able to know what you are telling us. Use me as a vessel for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Let's get the context of this chapter 19 from verses 11. It begins with where they were. Who are these were? While they were. Chapter 19, verses 3, at the end, it says, um, because of the crowd. So the word uh, refers to the people or the crowd who had journeyed with Jesus Christ. Then, uh, why they were listening to this? What is this they were listening to? When you start the chapter 19, there was a conversation between Jesus and Zacchaeus. Let me call him Zach. About uh, when he was on the top of the tree grab. Let's not go to these details. But let us know that this was a conversation between Jesus and Zacchaeus. Okay. Then... Uh, the one who was telling them this uh, parable talked about a noble man. This noble man refers, uh, in the context of uh, the word of God, the no noble man refers, refers to Jesus. Then verses 14, the noble man was to live and be made a king. Verses 14 says, but his subjects, who are these subjects? The citizens he was going to rule rejected that there was a rebellion, but however, he had to be sent. Why? Maybe they were afraid of the oppression. Okay, and finally, let's go to verse 16. The first one, first two servant, came and said, Sir, you are mine. The miner they were given to do business with was not theirs. It was for the noble man. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So the minor did not belong to them, it was uh, for the noble man. So then, why is Jesus Christ giving this parable? Because there was a notion that the kingdom of God would be instituted immediately. But Jesus Christ, reading his mind, their minds, he knew uh, some several things. What did Jesus know? He knew, number one, he had to die, he had to suffer, he had to be raised again. Okay. Number two, Jesus Christ knew there was a, a departure. He had to depart to heaven. Number three, there was going to be a long period of wait, which is a grace dispensation period. And why, that is why the servants were given a minor. In my absence, I am going to be absent for a long time. I'm going to give you this minor and do some business with it. But then again, Jesus knew at one time I will return and the kingdom of God, his kingdom will be fully established. So he's coming again. Praise the name of the Lord. Coming, he's coming. Never mind the delay, Jesus Christ is coming again as king. Praise the Lord. So then, what is the topic today? Uh, Joy quoted Sadi School. When Sadi School come here and tell us, uh, we have a song, our uh, uh, memory verse. So sit down, relax, and smile, and what have you? Are we going to do what Sunday school tell us? That when you are given that minor, no business. Sit down, enjoy, relax, smile. No. Praise the name of the Lord. There is some business here with that minor that the noble man who is Jesus Christ has given unto us. So the king... Before he comes, he expects us uh, to engage ourselves in some business affectionately. The way Mosebi did it. I didn't know he's the one who was reading the service, but I could see the affection in him. The call did not but matter to him. So then, what is the title of my topic today? My topic today, or oh, what the Lord wants us to hear, is holding on to God as we serve him faithfully until he returns. Holding on to God as we serve him faithfully until he returns. And therefore, Jesus Christ, as a noble man, is expecting you and I to do some things during this grace dispensation period, during this long wait, because uh, it doesn't matter. Though the waiting leaguers in Habakkuk 2 3, he has to return. What does our Jesus expect us to do? What is this business he has given us with the minor? Because he has given us what it takes. These are the expectations of Jesus Christ. Number one, do the business faithfully and trusted to us until the king returns. There is one thing to do the business, my dear ones, and there is another to do it faithfully. So do the business faithfully until he returns. Let us engage ourselves actively under the lordship of Jesus Christ until he returns. Because again, I can't remember whether it is the praise and worship leader or the intercessor who said he has given us everything. The power is already installed in us because second Peter uh, one three says the last portion his divine power has given us everything we need brethren we have everything that we need the word of God here has everything for us 
to engage ourselves actively with the business of Jesus Christ, and that is to bring many people to the Lordship of Christ. Number two. Be faithful. What does God expect us before he returns? Be faithful, conduct the business entrusted to us in absolute honesty or faithfulness, continuously and affectionately. I love the last two words, how? Continuously and affectionately. And that's why uh, I, I, Musebi is my subject today. When I look at all these gadgets assembled here, I always imagine what would happen if they fail. There will be a lot of screaming here because they are power connected, isn't it? And there will be a lot of smoke or something. But you know these people, you come at 7.30 in the morning. This team is here in this place from outside this helter skelter. They are organizing all these. Some others are having small buckets here, um, uh, wiping the, the, the seats. Others are calling the children to go. There's a lot of activity here from 7.30 until you are comfortably seated here. And it is not only one Sunday, continuous and affectionately. They do it with a lot of affection. There are some things that we need to note here. These people have the same resource which we all have. This word tells you and reveals to you what God has called us to do. And when you are doing this, holding on to Jesus, the power continues to be renewed. It is not about leaders. It is not about Dr. Wanyama. It's not about Anne. It's not about leadership. It's not about pastoral team. The minor to servants is to us all, one each. For doing the business, it's not the leadership, it's not the password. All of us have that minor. But you have to do the business with it. Praise the name of the Lord. Last year we had our best preacher uh, called uh, Charles Stanley who went to be with the Lord. My family loved his preaching. And as he grew old, he could even preach seated down. Even when he was aiding, he preached and he's, he's this preacher who could preach even without the, he kept the Bible there, he explained the scripture. So I remembered Charles Stanley and we are telling each other, eh, at this age and he's seated and, and the congregation is very happy about him. Let us serve continuously until that last minute when he returns or he calls me back as the song was saying then two weeks ago we, we my family we love the singers called gathers and i know some of you love them Gaither started singing when he was young and now he's also elderly uh, and he has families who sing then last two weeks ago there's a family that is called the Nilons. The Nilons is a family of husband, wife, uh, two girls, and their husbands. They sing together. And now the husband, the Nilon, and the, hus and the wife, and one of the uh, girls, daughters, and the husband were involved in a plane clash. And you know where they were going? They were going to join the gathers and then have the uh, cruise ship to go and launch some music. Be found serving the Lord when he returns. Gathers have really blessed many with their music. And even us, there's that business that God is expecting us to carry out during this grace dispensation period until he returns. Carry it out until he returns. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Number three, the third expectation of our Lord Jesus Christ before he comes again is, uh, the point is, hold on to Jesus faithfully when carrying out the business he has entrusted with, even when the environment is hostile. Even when the environment is hostile. I think the environment for Musebi was very hostile. Imagine, even when you have a code, waking up in the morning is so difficult. I don't know for me. But Musebi, one thing I assure you, as uh, Joel was saying, there are brethren who are standing with us. And as I stand here, I bless the Lord. Some of you called, texted, if you have prayed, really, really prayed for me. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. So the environment is very hostile, my dear ones. And even to Jesus Christ, he was called the son. And then verses 14, is it verses 14? But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. The enemy keeps on pulling us down. He has a sort of a syndrome called pull me down. When you want to serve, no, you don't have this, you don't have this, you cannot serve. He has a pull down syndrome. Even when you want to rise, he is telling you, no, you cannot make it. Cheating, lies. Don't believe the enemy. Don't believe his syndrome. You can make it because the power has already been uh, instituted on you. And the song, there are victories to be won. Praise the name of the Lord. Even as, as you serve now, there are those victories you have already won them. Don't wait for anybody to notice you. Jesus Christ is already continuously, he's already noticing you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, several instances, Jesus Christ, the one we want to hold on to when we are serving during this period when he's away, when there's a delay, Jesus Christ himself experienced uh, rebellion. And we know one of the worst rebellions was crucify him, crucify him. Yeah. So, let us desire to hold on to Jesus because he has some experience, a lot of, a, a lot of it more than us. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when the environment is hostile, let's do the business entrusted to us faith-free. And we have some people who can help us. That's why we have the ministers of God. We have our pastor is here, Pastor uh, Dan, the Kiriga, and the leadership will help you. And especially the pastoral team will help you know what business you can transact with God. They are able to see that with the spirit of discernment. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. The last expectation that Jesus is expecting us to do, carrying out the business faith-free with only one minor, is accountability. The nobleman returned and he desired to see the accountability. Accountability is expected of us after we carry out this business that is entrusted to us when the king returns. Because returning, he must return. And the beauty of accountability and his return is that there is a reward. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a reward, and reward is according to your faithfulness, how you carried out the business with faithfulness. And finally, the enemy will be executed. The, the intercessor talked about the dragon. In Revelations 2010, 
the enemy will be executed. And therefore, what is the conclusion here? What is the conclusion of the matter? Number one, you will never lose it if you faithfully serve the Lord. If you faithfully do the business God has entrusted us with, you will never lose. Number two, the Lord notices the servants who are faithful and they will be richly rewarded. They are also rewarded continuously. The Lord notices the servants who are faithful and they will be richly rewarded. And number three, the reward is proportional to our service. The first one, was given test, 10 cities in charge, the second one, five cities in charge. It is proportional to our service. And finally, soon, soon, a day is coming. A day is coming when we serve and hold on to Jesus Christ. There is a voice. A day is coming when we serve and hold on to the Lord. There is a voice. Which voice? Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. I, I want us to listen to a song. I don't know whether Keegan, Keegan, do you have the song? I want us to listen to a song by this gentleman called Marvin Maru. Praise the name of the Lord as we desire to hold on to Jesus. Yes, so uh, Joy talked about the Sunday school and the Sunday school also always sing two songs I love. I'm, go I'm gonna shine. I'm going to shine, shine, shine. Let's shine for the Lord. The other one is also related to that. That says, this little right of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. But there's a verse they said, hide it under the bush. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't hide your miner under the bush. No, let it shine. Is the song ready? I'm gonna hold on, hold on to Jesus, hold to the Lamb of Calvary. I'm gonna hold on, hold on to Jesus, and Jesus will hold on to me. In this troubled world we live in, nothing seems to make sense. Many looking for the way, searching to and fro. Sometimes this rope I'm holding seems to be slipping, but I'm gonna hold on tighter to the only hope I know. I'm gonna hold on, hold on to Jesus, hold to the Lamb of Calvary. Saying you can't make it Trying to convince me There's no use to try But I refuse to listen And keep right on going Trust I'm gonna hold The Jesus knots up time I'm gonna hold Jesus and Jesus 
Jesus will hold on to me I'm gonna hold on Hold on to Jesus Hold to the Lamb of Calvary on to you. The King Jesus is holding on to you as you serve until he returns. May the Lord bless us.